Clay uh, uh, County School Board uh, meeting um, workshop, January 23rd, 2018, come to order. Um, Dr. Welcome all the citizens of the county, and we thank you for being here. If you would like to speak, you can speak. There's an opportunity at the end of the workshop, and your participation is welcome. With the workshop items, uh, draft agenda review for regular meeting of February 1st, 2018. Mr. Dave. Okay, good morning everyone. Sorry for being a couple minutes late, but we'll go ahead and get started. Um, as you see, we have recognitions of awards for all state band and core students, along with uh, transitioning uh, to uh, presenters for career and technical education presentation. And to go back, it'll probably be more of all ba uh, all state band, and we'll Thank we will you. get the course at another time because it's, they have a uh, they have a, a presentation or practice for that night. Yeah. So Thank this you. will be updated to just be an all state band, and we will identify course at another time. So this push just change that yep. on the agenda. All right, C1 is minutes for a regular school board meeting for January the 4th. C2 is a Florida Youth Challenge student employee work, in, uh, work calendar for 18-19. There, for FLICA, there is no significant changes. Everything is kind of duplicated for what we did last year in line. C3 is revision to the controlled open enrollment plan. Because I do, but mine came up uh, with a different agenda. Um, I mean, like the wrong date. It was there yesterday, and then yeah, yeah, because I just added the attachment. So this is when we wanted to make sure that there was a uh, there was backup in there. So we have we have put this plan last month, and there's two revisions. The first revision is that we had a, uh, a typo, and it said that lottery would end on May the 23rd, and it's actually March 23rd. And then we went back to make sure all of our seats were accurate, and we found that uh, at Clay High School that we didn't account for AMI. So we reduced it from 257 seats to 161 seats. So the plan will be updated according to the necessary adjustments and changes. I was surprised to see Thunderbolt. Yeah. Yeah. That's the yes. first year they've been on it. Yes, ma'am. 22 seats. But notice the schools have been taken off as well. Right. Swimming pens have gone up. Yeah, there. swimming pens in, increased by 100 mm -hmm. students this year, so mm -hmm. it's, it's interesting to see yeah. the, the mm -hmm. mobility. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. 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 So. I thought it both got a lot of kids. So. Um, C4 is the personnel consent agenda. Um, on here, I'll, I'll make sure that there are some, some items you need to be informed of is that uh, uh, Mrs. Chastain, the Title I supervisor, will be uh, retiring. So celebration for her hard work within this organization. Marcus Dooley will be retiring uh, as, a, as a principal. He's done a great job working with Katie to support new principals for the last six months. We're appreciative of his work. And then you have a resignation of Tommy Fishpatrick, who will be going to Broward County to be the director of fleet, making $40,000 more uh, financially. So um, we'd love to keep him. He'd love to stay, but it's a lot of money to pass up. Um, in that, you will also see that we a uh, recommendation to move Daryl Sweat. He's currently the supervisor of transportation to an interim uh, director of transportation. And I say interim because Daryl's been here for the last uh, for the last couple of months learning, uh, learning the transportation ins and outs. I don't believe it's a good time to go out and open to open the uh, the pool for candidates. Um, in addition, it gives an internal candidate opportunity to prove confidence between now and the remainder of the school year. Um, and then at the end of the year, we will be able to determine uh, what is best for the area of transportation, whether or not uh, Mr. Schwett's the right person to lead this work, and uh, Tommy did a great job, or whether or not we need to open it up and, and reorg that division. So um, just to be open with kind of where we are. You'll see Heather, uh, Heather Roche as adding to be the principal at Ridgeview Elementary School, along with Tracy McLaughlin being the principal at Discovery Oaks. We've heard some excitement about that, by the way. Brock, anything else? Nope, that's it. C five is the uh, is the ratify the CESPA contract uh, that will go out to all employees on Tuesday, January the thirtieth, uh, to be ratified. Uh, once we have that information, we'll be able to to, to to add the documentation for percentage of approval to move forward with this in the board meeting. C6 is to ratify the contract between the, the school board and the CCE, the CCEA, um, <laughs> with the uh, with FIVA. This has uh, already been ratified, <coughs> excuse me, 95% plus 
of the staff approve the, um, the, the current contract, and this one is ready to move forward. C7 is the agreement between <clears throat> the school board and parish and, and, and associates. This is with our work for a number of talks with our professional development. We have had 241 individuals that have been trained with another 100 coming on board. This has impacted 26 schools in our school district. This was originally slated for January 3rd, in which we had to cancel. So uh, we had to pay the, this individual's travel fees because they were already here. So we want to, uh, this contract is increasing the money for $924 to bring them back uh, to pay for their travel lodging so that we can extend this professional development to our teachers. And this is all used through SAI funding. Can I make a quick comment? Yes, ma'am. In all of your information and with the upcoming Intel math, it always says 52% um, uh, are on K through 8 math content. And no, that's good. I mean, that's exactly probably a fact. Yeah. But when it is tested, realize just everybody understand that they're taking first grade teachers and second grade teachers and testing them on seventh and eighth grade curriculum. Mm -hmm. And when you're not teaching it constantly, I mean, if I asked yeah. you what figure yeah. slope, you might be able to, you might on that slope. But it's one of those things that I don't want it to sound like our teachers are not capable of teaching math <laughs> in their current grade level, but understanding that this is just that foundation yeah. to see where they're going, which right. is great, which is awesome. But I always read that one fact in all of that information, and I think, Makes us sound like idiots. <laughs> uh, and, and I don't—it's not presented that way. A gap analysis yeah. is just for us to identify our gaps and just to show that we just have areas of opportunity to improve content knowledge. And, and, and it's very hard for to have a K-8 continuum of mathematical practices, and especially when you're teaching K-1 and 2. So, you know. Yes, ma'am. All right, C-8 is a career pathway articulation with Santa Fe College. This is only uh, between the school board. This is only articulation for Oakleaf uh, agricultural biotechnology students. They're one of the classes that uh, we offer a number of classes and credits for eligible students. Um, number of students. Yeah, currently we have no students that are involved, but since they have this uh, pathway, we want to continue to, to have this agreement just in case a student elects to, to transition for this course for us. A while back, I sat on the uh, advisory board for Biotech Florida. Yes, ma'am. Previous career part of my job was in Biotech, and there are tremendous jobs out there. If we can put more students on that pathway, there's a lot of opportunity in the North Florida area. They don't have to really have yes, that Biotech program. Um, at Santa Fe is a is a separate campus built in Alachua across the street from the University of Florida built a research park the University of Florida is not there anymore right. it's all little companies little startup companies but they go across the street and hire interns so oh, there are opportunities that these kids wanted to drive from, obviously yes, from Oakley too. And that's a conversation that, that, yeah. And, and I appreciate that's a conversation I've had with Mr. Connor about what we do to expand it and to get more kids excited around it. Yeah, that's a fantastic program. Yeah. Uh, C9 is a, is a proclamation for TTE month and the theme is uh, Celebrate Today, Own Tomorrow. And this is just recognizing the hard work of, uh, you know, CTE within, within our school district and uh, focusing on the entire month to highlight their efforts. So raise, raise awareness. And I will be speaking today to the Oak Leaf um, uh, Business Council just about how we prepare our students to uh, today prepare our students for more through CTE programming. So it's going to be another 29 PowerPoint slide. But, Okay. It's only about 15 in it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it is really, we, we skimmed out. You'll have to add it. <laughs> I know, right? I need personal finance. I know. <laughs> uh, C10 is uh, is our is our, our agreement with the Clark uh, School of the Deaf. This is uh, funding through IDA student uh, through our IDA IDA funding, and it's, we currently have four students in within our school district with these services. And uh, this is, uh, we service kids from pre-K all the way to 22 years of age in, 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 in this need through uh, exceptional education. Mr. Davis, where, um, what schools does this affect? Um, Mike, do you know what schools these four students are, are from? Do we try to keep them all at one school, or how does that work? Because I know sometimes with services you want to... I, I think these, school, these students are actually... Which go, school is this? this is the Clark School. I think they're attending school. Oh, all. this is for, this is, they're, these yeah, are for pre k students yeah. to go I think to they're the there. School. Yeah, Clark they're school. The Clark oh, School. Yeah, they're there all year. They have um, their pre K program. The state of Florida requires a certain level of certification and type of certification to work with hearing impaired young children. Mm -hmm. 
and my understanding through research is like eight people in the state currently that hold that. Um, <laughs> and it one. would not be fiscally responsible for us as a district to go through the process to do it. So we send those those students to Clark okay. um, because we only have, I think the history is in there about four a year at the moment. Yeah, it's, it's, it's been between fluctuating the last four years, four to five students, but in, I think oh, at nine it was or, 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 you know, around 10, 11, it was around 11 or 12 students. So just services that we are, aren't able to accommodate and extend to kids. I know in the language impaired, um, is it, is it secluded classroom? Yeah. Yeah. I've seen deaf children in the yeah. so I was just curious how that works. I think so, the severity of the need. This is, right, and that's a good question, Mr. Housen. Um, for these students, because of their age, what the, the Clark School focuses primarily on therapeutic intervention and not as much on academic oh, okay. to get them ready for the academic part of it. Okay. So that when they do transition to wherever they may go for mm -hmm. kindergarten right. on, um, they've, they've had a lot of those experiences with different strategies. Um, uh, the Clark School does not believe in developing the use of sign language, so that is a little bit of a controversial element to it. Um, but these are kids who also have various devices that they that their hearing is, is such that they can engage in, in, in that level of, of intervention. So that, I will find, I'll give the, on um, my follow-up, the ages of the students, along with okay. what what schools they will eventually or currently are assigned to. So I we had some conversation year. around the um, language impaired classrooms, and so for those families that this would affect, this might be right. you know, an alternative or. C11 is just approval for out-of-state travel. Most of this is a number of competitions for our students to compete in and uh, attend uh -huh. attending conferences. C12 is Bright Minds Development. This is a summer enrichment program for our students from the age of uh, 5 to 16. Uh, they've had a three-year agreement. This is an extended of another three-year agreement. They're in five schools, which is in four elementaries and one, and one um, four elementaries, and they are one junior high school. Uh, this is a point where this year we I've walked many of these campuses in the summer. I do believe there's an opportunity for us to um, to focus on greater opportunities for to reduce summer learning loss for academics. So I'm going to try to work with uh, with Stallman and Connor to figure out what we can do instructionally to, to better own the academics within this uh, within this uh, summer programming. Um, I will work with uh, Bright Minds to ensure that they are paying for um, they are paying for facility usages, but also paying for supplies and resources so it's not coming out of our pockets as it relates to toiletries and those types of things. But um, I do think it's a good program for kids. Uh, they do a lot of scholarship opportunity for kids who can't afford uh, to go to summer care. Um, I just think we can help uh, Bright Minds get, get better and stronger as they move forward in this district. And you did check to see if the paper towels and all that type yes, of stuff that, that it will leave their costs. Yes ma'am, I, I have a phone call out and I will ensure that it's not, we are not incurring the cost and they have to pay for that. Because I've been told that our custodians are very frustrated yes, because their supplies are being used. Yes ma'am. And, and, and they also have to clean up after yeah. their, That's our right. custodians. I love the message. So yeah. there's been a few drops there that Yes, to keep a close eye. A close, uh, if I could mirror that, not only just a close eye, but if you are going to be working with them on the academic side of it, um, to encourage them to keep their children, how can I say this, in a typical classroom setting. I, I, I've heard just grumbling. Sure. Just grumbling. We'll yeah. make sure we protect um, the environment, uh, the, our, our schools, and then. Call? I think we want to do a better job with the, with the field trip experiences to get our kids out to the cultural experiences that they've never seen before. So yeah. try to do a better job reigning with that. Good. I've got Terry Connor on it. Mm -hmm. he, he's ready to go. He understands uh, what we need to do to improve it, and uh, we'll 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 see how well we can do it for this calendar year. C13 is a dual, dual enrollment articulation agreement between uh, school board and, F and FSCJ. Um, uh, right now, we don't have any students that are enrolled, but we do have we like to have an articulation agreement between um, between this provider because we have students, especially in the north of the county, as Orange Park and Oakley, that may be a little closer to go to FCC, FSCJ in order to to take coursework. So we just want to make sure this agreement is in place. Last year, I believe we only had a handful 
like two or three students uh, okay. that attended, and we only spent it, you know, it was around $1,300 for textbooks and, and for enrollment for, for courses. But we always want to have that availability for kids. Uh, C-14 is the Clay County Sheriff's uh, Office Secondary Employment Contract. This is pretty much for our deputies to work uh, at extracurricular events that we offer within the school district. Uh, their rates have gone up from $26 to $30 for their deputies and for a supervisor from $30 to $34. So this is just acknowledging that their wages have went up and that we're uh, uh, agreeing to them and that, uh, that our, our school staff will be prepared to, to pay through their uh, budgets that generate through their athletic and extracurricular events. C-15 is Intel Math Professional Development. Uh, to date, uh, I believe we've, we've had 100, over 120 teachers that have uh, been provided Intel Professional Development. This is all about conceptual mathematical <coughs> understanding. We see cohorts that are with, that are Intel trained have a better understanding of preparing our students to, to be successful in mathematical practices. Um, this year it will be a 30 teachers again, but it will be a little different structure in the sense that we're going going to have out of the 30, 18 slots will be for Dodea schools, and Dodea will pay a portion of it. We will have 10 slots this year for Title I schools, in, in which Title I uh, portion of money will be paying for those 10 slots, and then we will use SII funding to offer, I think it's Lakeside Elementary School, um, LSE. Yes, I think. Lakeside so. Elementary School. That way that we have a blend of a high-performance school, Title I schools, and Dodea grants, uh, Dodea schools, in order to have a, a wider range of, of touching teachers within different schools and that way they can do a train the trainer model to continue to um, to train other teachers within within their uh, grade band or within their content continue to grow in, in the area of mathematics. Once, it, mathematics. once again this would be a thousand dollar supplement that will be extended to our teachers for their um, class, classwork and coursework which is rigorous. I will say that we're going to have to be creative the following year because the DIA grants will be, and this is our way to kind of drive into it using Title I and SAI in order to, um, to replenish. This is our ninth day. cohort. We'll have a tenth cohort and then the money will be gone. So hopefully everyone will take advantage of that. And Title has been stepping up and supplementing for the Title schools. Is there a DoDEA grant that we can apply for again? Oh, we will be okay. applying every year. Right, right. I agree. I would assume that. but We did. We applied this with this current year, um, but their funding went from 80 million to 30 million, and so we were not part of the lucky cohort this go around. Um, I personally have had lots of sit downs and phone calls with Dodea in the last couple of months, and so I'm excited about where we're going. The thing with Dodea, you need to understand it only hits select schools, and so there's a group of our schools that are not trained, and they're actually some of our most challenged schools. They're in the the cherry orange and purple meter pattern, so we would really have to look for other funding sources to help them. Our DODEA grants tend to hit the same schools over, over yeah. and over oh, just where? because of their naturally their eligibility of uh, um, oh. military students. So that. that's it. I mean, but that's it's but it is a, a, another source of income, so right. that, that always helps us. And, and this is the like I said, this is the reason why we're using different funding sources this year to, to, to lean off of using DODEA. Mm -hmm. Um, C C16 is renewal for our contract uh, with um, uh, with Commercial Fire Incorporated. This is by um, by board policy. We're we're required to have fire extinguisher and kitchen hood systems inspections on an annual basis, and this is a two year a two year agreement. Um, We've used the same company, I believe, Dr. Lebecco, for the last six years. Correct. And the, the beauty about the last six years is that the price hasn't changed. And uh, <laughs> I believe that we went in a different direction, that we would have a, a higher price, so we're trying to lock it in now. C-17 is an agreement between um, um, the uh, Utility Authority and Amendment Discovery Oaks Elementary uh, Discover this elementary. This is where we're going to have easement for water and reclaimed water, just for us to look at uh, you know wastewater required for the contractor to be able to gain access and, and move um, and move forward with the Discovery Oaks Elementary. We have we have some representatives here too. Yep. 
yep. take and the, time out of your busy yep. day to come listen to our workshops. Well, they, there's another. There's another uh, at the end of our agenda. There's another item that we want. Oh. To, they're here to speak to, and we want to present to the Lord. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, they're doing good work. Good thing you're being here. That doesn't sound good. I oh, know, right? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thanks for the advance warning. Yes, <laughs> Um, C18 is a uh, pre-qualified, uh, pre-qualification for contractors for the, for the month of February. C19 is the change order for Discovery Oaks Elementary. This is pretty much our, our, our tax savings is around $396,000 that we'll save on um, being tax exempt. A total, which in this one will be $122,000. C20 is a final phase for uh, specifications for the ACE testing facility. How many more times are we in? Yeah, I'm really I know it came back too expensive, and then it, it's—I'll uh, be honest with you—I I spent a long time on this, too much time. But um, originally, this was started out as a project that was going to be five to six hundred thousand um, dollars. We went out for an architecture, and, and which the school generates a lot of the, most of this money. They—they they really do through their ACE and IB. Um, then we, it comes back where Mr. Davis is going to be around nine hundred thousand dollars, and I'm like I don't have the money for that. And then it ends up being openly, honestly, it's going to be around one point three million dollars. What? One point three million dollars. So has the school generated all of that money? Yeah. Or is that the, coming out of? No, this is all going to be generated by the schools, and uh, for this year they're, they're going to use. IB funding, ACE funding for the next two years. They don't have an IB program. I mean, I'm sorry. Yeah, I mean, we're going to use um, uh, AP. the ACE and AP, I'm sorry, yeah. uh, programming too. They, have, they generate a lot of money. So if you want me to, I can send you the breakdown of money they generate in order to show you what uh, they have in order to build a facility. I openly and told um, our, our operations division along with Mr. Pittman that we just don't have money to provide and, and, and assist. So we will be we will be using money for uh, 17, 18 money for um, his AP money and, and ACE money along with some of his money that he has for 18 and 19 as well that he will generate. And he usually generates around $500,000 a year uh, in, in one silo in order, and that's for testing. So what happens with the shortfall? Because it still doesn't add up to one point. Yeah, um, we, we will get, go ahead, Don. Um, a minor correction, if you don't mind. Yeah, it's correct. actually one May in 033, uh -huh. so it's 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 a little less impact. And really, what we did was uh, we looked at his AP funds and the remaining dollars for 1819. Once we meet those statutory requirements, we will use that towards um, um, the uh, balancing to fund this entire program. Mm -hmm. So, what's the timeline for this? So, you're talking about 1819 yeah. funds, but they're it, it extends into the 18-19 year. I mean, yeah, they'll, they'll, they'll initiate. I mean, they were finalizing plans, and uh, it was all about what it, what they could actually hold, what it had to have, what the facility had to have, um, and then it will it will initiate the plans, but it will roll into the 18-19 fiscal year. So it, they won't it won't be completed this year. But we'll be using upfront money to pay it. It'll be an extended project. Well, that's the part that worries me that we're upfronting money because we don't have money. Right. And, and if we have money, I mean, I've already asked to look for places to find money to fund our insurance premiums for our employees. Right. So I'm concerned that we're upfronting money. And we're not. We're not upfronting money. What I'm saying is the build. Sorry, the, the build is happening now. He has money for 17, 18, and that will that will initiate the project. And as we transition to the July, he will continue to have, to have funds generated to be able to pay once the, the money comes in for um, for AP. Mr. Davis. What type of reason has it gone up steadily? I mean, what, what is going on that's making everything more? And you're talking about for the build, mm -hmm. the, the square, the build for a square foot has, has gone out of the roof. So right now, I mean, it's like 160 to 170 dollars to build per square foot. So it's really to a point where we originally thought we would be able to get it for 130 dollars per square foot, but now the competitive prices have just you know business is moving forward. So I think that's the causation. And then we were going to build originally build a facility for 156 kids. And the 156 uh, kids couldn't accommodate the cohorts that he had, 
in order to provide a isolated um, location for testing. So he has a number of cohorts and classes where he has to administer testing for 180 and 196 kids, and this testing facility will hold a little bit over 200 kids. So now instead of using the cafeteria and have a modified schedule to do AP testing and ACE testing, he then can you he can continue his schedule for for um, continued his schedule for. Uh, for lunches and all those activities and have one hub where he can test everyone at one central location. Eventually it can also be used in a, in a multi-purpose capacity too if you needed to use it for, for, for trainings, if you needed to use it for um, AP, ACE, um, you know, informational nights or you know, professional development. It's a good use and uh, trust me, I, I have spent a number of meetings with Dr. Lagucco along with uh, Mr. Kemp and Mr. Pittman about we do, making sure that the money is right. So we don't have to go into, and in, I don't want to come to the board for any portion of the reserves. I, I find it, I'm not poking back at you, but I yeah. feel like I feel the need to verbalize this, that it's extremely frustrating to me that the process works this way. And I don't, this, none, no one on this board, I don't think, wants to hinder progress within the school district. But that being said, I filled in for Ms. Stutter, who was filling in for Ms. Caracas, who was out of town, and Ms. Stutter had a, a death. And so I filled in on that contractor approval. Remember right. when I right. did that for you? Right. Yeah, the, right. you had the funeral. Yeah. So, um, so I saw the bids, it, and the three finalists came in and presented. And the frustrating thing was one of the requirements and, and one of the selection criteria was keep, could they ensure construction costs below mm -hmm. a certain amount per square foot and I don't remember the details right. of it right. and so what's frustrating to me is that then when you award a bid then now mm -hmm. they're coming back mm -hmm. and saying oh no we can't do that well that was one of their selection right. criteria right. and um, so and the other holding them to that That's right. yeah one point. and then the other frustrating thing I think is that and I understand the school is excited I understand the school generates these funds mm -hmm. It's a sort of unique situation because not all of our schools have the opportunity to generate such funding, right. so they couldn't even have the opportunity to build such a facility. Right. And I remember in the presentation, again, I fully support the, them right. wanting to have it, but it'll be the only one in the state. <clears throat> They're touting, you know, we'll have the only testing facility in the state. And so it, it, it just is concerning to me that this board isn't, isn't kind of going to be left holding a rotten egg, so to speak, from a financial standpoint to the public of why did we move forward to build the only one in the state. Maybe there's a reason because they're expensive to have. And then I, ask, I also wonder about how does it affect, you know, the fish model. This is outside of cost per student station. Excuse me, station. We know the uh, legislature has looked at what school districts are spending as far as the cost for student station. And then my only, so that was, those were yeah, my concerns. Sure. I just wanted to verbalize those to my fellow board members and just as you think about it. But my, my other question would be, what are they giving up in 1819 for those funds? Those funds would have been spent on something in 1819. So what are they giving up? 1718. In 1718, they had already designated to build it. But from what, how were those funds spent? In 16, in 17, yeah. Exactly. And I know, in, I know, in past years, that I, I know that that school had been frustrated that some of those funds had been used to help support programs at other schools, um, because we are one school district and have a responsibility to provide sure. education to all of our students. Yeah. I guess that's just one. Yes, ma'am. So today is just approving uh, for the uh, just approving the the plans. I will get um, uh, fish impact. I will get financially. I'll give you a financial update of, of where that funding will will be arrived from, and then give you a part of what they'll be giving up for 18, 19. So you'll be able to see. So at, at this point, this is just approving plans, and we can pause if you believe there's a, a pause with, within the board. And, and I'd like to ask someone. Sorry, Dr. Kemp. He is sick today. Why, when you? have the meeting and they are saying that they can do it for X amount and then they come, do you often have people come back and keep raising it more and more and more that we can't do it by what they said they could do? I wasn't involved in this selection process. So I'm not sure what they had said that they had promised. Um, 
were they saying they could do it for a certain cost per square foot? Well, there wasn't a not. I don't recall exactly a not to exceed, but there that was one of the criteria on the qualifier buying list. What I'd like to know is, does this happen frequently? Uh, is this very rare? And if so, legally, I mean, is there any legalities to this that they're coming in saying we can do this and then they can't? So, what is our what can we do? Recourse. Yeah, what is our recourse? I'd have to find out more about what happened with the project. Okay. I know it was a design build, so yeah. the design wasn't totally complete before they went out for contractors. Um, so they might have said, yeah, we can do based on what we've been talking about on the loosely based design. Um, well, see, and these we are can things, do that cost. These are things but if things had evolved know. and changed to and now we're doing it for 200 kids and you know we want to add you know, this space uh, to the facility well, and those things change. have changed but, and which would have much. driven up the cost which then at that time they said yeah we could have done it for this price but now that these things have changed the cost yeah, is going to change I'm sure there's that. a lot of back and forth things that have happened but I just want to know on this instance why mm -hmm. and um, because to me when they come in and present their wares, so to speak, the three finalists, uh, I've always taken them at their word that they can do what they are telling me they can do. And if they don't, then what is our recourse? Mm -hmm. well, my understanding, and I can't remember if it was you, Mr. Davis, or Dr. Kent, but I talked to someone about this issue okay. because I, we saw the escalating cost right. was not news to us. I've known right. that. We've seen that over the last few months. And I can't remember who I had the conversation with, but what I was told is that um, ACE has certain requirements for this building, and I'm not sure that yeah. those were factored into the original design. So I think that's they why were. Because yeah, I sat were. on the committee for the engine when they chose the um, engineering architect firm, uh -huh. and the requirements were clearly stated where the <coughs> entrance and exits, where the sign and where the bathrooms are. That you know, all of that was very. Bryce, you might have been on it with me. It was you know all pointed out where that all had to be. So really, it sounds like it changes the number of students. Yes, ma'am. And so the capacity, so it must be larger than what it was originally going to be. But that's still yeah. an awful. Um, but that's I, 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 I I agree. Agree. I mean, We're talking five hundred thousand to a million. This is sound. Could share with the board yes, uh, <laughs> a little more clarifying information. Oh well, absolutely. So, absolutely, and, and listen, I agree with everyone at this table, Dr. McGuckle, that we had a, a meeting for an hour yesterday, and these are all some of the same I have. So, uh, today, the reason I didn't pull, if it would have been the final push forward, it's just a final uh, plan or spec uh, specifications for it. Right, I think that, I think the ship has sailed, I, I guess. My, I was just wanting to, to express so that we're all informed because we know we're the ones who will get the phone calls and we're responsible. Right. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Especially if we have to put money, upfront money, until they get more mm -hmm. in. That's a big concern to yes, me. Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. We can't afford that. But we're not we don't have it, right? I mean, not as right now, no, ma'am. Mm -hmm. Well, well, but I'll give you. That, that would come to the board happen. first before Absolutely. that yeah. even considered. I, 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 I agree. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. All right. C21 is the schematic uh, final specifications for Middleburg Elementary School restroom renovations. So they work there. C22 is uh, the, um, the final phases of Orange Park Elementary kitchen renovations as well. C23 is the, is the disposal of the Fleming Island Elementary Cornwall that burned down. Uh, we have to have on record that we, in order for us to, to move forward with removing this from our fish and facility, it needs to be a resolution to dispose of it. This was uh, an, an electric fire. The, the heater was pushed to emergency heat, which then uh, triggered a, uh, an extreme heat element that, that ended up catching on fire. The total damage uh, and the cost to rebuild and replace this portable is around $37,000. Um, uh, portable 8, 841, which is the portable, has a wood structure, which is one of the main problems. And we're lucky we called it early because it would have just grew tremendously with all the portables that are in the area. So, and this portable is 26 years of age. Mm -hmm. So I know that the, um, I know it's impossible to put the portables onto the building management systems where. I know in the actual structure buildings that they, yes, have, they control the heating and air 
electronically. Yeah. So what is what is the fix to not have these switches be I mean, honestly, I don't have a fix. I mean, other than we come and we got to figure out some way to tap in, take you know, uh, a um, re remote access electronic thermostat, which would cost us extensively to put in every one of our 900 portables, but it would be able to gain greater control of it. Um, this is a situation where it was uh, cold and we had uh, a day off on the third, I believe. In, a, in, a t in an administrator or a custodian, whomever went in, and, and instead of just putting the heat up, they just put it on emergency heat, which brings it quickly to uh, to heat that room up, and it's just overheated. So I think right now we're trying to do as much coaching as we can about how to interact with these thermostats, <laughs> what to keep them at, because the, the one thing about the portable is the beauty of it. From a teacher's perspective, you can control the climate <laughs> any minute. <laughs> Every day is why you know, we all want portable, the teachers want them. <laughs> So um, we just got to be able to continue to coach and train about how to use and, and interact with them. And I would say, just my professional advice you didn't ask for yes, is to document that training. Because yes, from an OSHA and a National Fire Protection Association standpoint, if we do retrain employees not to use the emergency heat function, that's that's adequate retraining. Mm -hmm. Just tell them don't use it, you know, and then obviously accidents happen. But, right. Yes, ma'am. So right now the recommendation is, is to demolish and remove. I have a question. Yes, ma'am. How does smoke detectors work in the portable stage? Obviously, they have their mm -hmm. own. Only individual. But is it so it's not linked to the main fire no. alarm? So mm -hmm. how? Yeah. Mm -hmm. We're fortunate we had a, a teacher that was yeah. that was working that evening, mm -hmm. and um, you know I, wow. I don't recommend teachers staying late for everybody watching uh, yeah. working that evening. <laughs> And uh, she saw smoke and called the administrator and called me and then rescue was in was there within 10 15 minutes and yeah. put it out so it, it was fortunate so did the teacher who had that up court of all lose everything uh not everything we had over 50 percent uh, uh 50, over 50 percent was a loss I mean, there there were some things that we lost from a district perspective there were some items that mm -hmm. they lost mm -hmm. from a personal perspective so um uh Leg work on, I know that we replace everything from the district that we own, but okay. personal, I, I mean, you want to speak to that? We, At this point, personal we, items are not repair, uh, are not district property, so therefore we're not responsible for yeah. personal property that's brought on school public buildings. So, but do we have a dollar amount of what the teacher said? In? Uh, at this point, I do not have an, an amount. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of the items, though, that I didn't notice were like um, plastic bins, mm -hmm. um, a few um, books. Yeah. Um, so we're looking at those items. Uh -huh. What grade? Uh, it was gifted, so she she mm -hmm. serviced students from K to six. Mm -hmm. um, Principal yeah. Collins has pictures of the damage. Yeah. It's deceptive mm -hmm. from the outside of the portable. Yeah. You can't really mm -hmm. tell how bad it is. Yeah, to get in. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So don't walk in, you'll smell like smoke. Yeah. It's bad. You can smell it just walking by. It's bad. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 100 yeah. feet away, it's awful. Mm -hmm. This is why we need to get it out of there, too. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. I'm surprised you could salvage anything from it. Yeah. From it. yeah. We, we well, if this is the portable, it was the heater was right here, so the main part is this wall and the, and the ceiling part. So anything that was connected, there was a desktop that, that was gone and some books. Everything else in the middle of the room to the back of the room where we were able to um, to, to maintain. But and luckily I, I just this teacher came to me in a board meeting and asked me for five Chromebooks and uh, you know, Macaulay and Buckley gave her five Chromebooks to work with her kids and she was so excited. We're so thankful that she was so happy. She was right no, well, she had them in there and they were in the back of the room. She I uh, wanted to see her the next day she goes, Y'all just gave me the Chromebooks and they were the first thing we went there to get and they were ready to go. So she she was good. And the good thing is that the um, Principal Collins was ready the next day to have another portable accessible for kids, and they continued the learning process. It was it was seamless transition, mm -hmm. just a you know a teaching learning moment. This is off a little bit off the subject, it's not about the fire, but on these portables. When we were having this extreme cold this year, I, I'm sure that all the board members got phone calls about it takes so long for them to warm up the portables. I had uh, parents complaining because they were putting their kids in school with coats, hats, gloves, the whole bit. But is what is the process for uh, getting the heat on yeah. in an adequate time that the portables are at least 
Clearly. Yeah, so um, there, there's, there's two structures. I don't know what the process is about who, what I mean, we, we don't encourage on. them to, we don't encourage anyone to leave, uh, turn them on and off unless they're over for break. So the, the biggest concern is when we have a break in service and when we're out for like the holidays. So this is where we I encourage uh, le leaders of a school and, law and also custodial staff to try to go in as early as they can in order to put them on, the, to put the heaters on in, a, in an area where it would heat up so it would be a comfortable environment. Um, that's why, you know, January 2nd was our, our virtual day, but our administrators were at work. This is where I openly said, in the email, go to your portables and turn them on and get them ready for kids. So the more the more we can be proactive and and, and circulating to have them on and ready and available for kids, the better the environment will be. As it relates to every day um, for the portables, as the same way with the air conditions in the schools, we don't turn them off, and we recommend them to have a, a certain threshold set point that's comfortable for our kids. Yeah, I mean, when we had the father call and say he was going to go pick his child up from school because it was so going from yeah. different yeah. degrees. And, and as you see, and, and, I, I'm not, and we've got to do it later, leaders have got to go and do what I asked them to do. It's so simplistic. But the the thresholds can be incredibly cold and the thresholds can be incredibly warm. And that's the complaint that we've had with the controlled system within our portables and within our buildings. And this is one of those examples where teachers don't have the, I mean, there are a lot of teachers who are working on planning day in their schools. Yes, a lot of them do the virtual planning, but when they go in and you try to set, you can only go up to a particular point. Oh, really? And that, well, because that's the threshold that's been set. And, which is in this case, and for the warm part of it, um, which is good because you don't want to hit the thermostat and hit it up to 90 and say, ooh, it'll, go, it'll heat up even faster. It doesn't work that way. Um, but when it only goes up to, let's say, 68, when kids first come in, yeah, still pretty chilly after you sit there for a while. And if it's 68, and, and yeah, once all of the children are in there, the building starts to get warm because you've got 26 kids or 25 kids, 22 children or whatever, sitting in this portable, and it is going to heat up eventually. The other side of that, though, is that they're portables, right? and children have to be outside waiting. And on those days, teachers generally, and that's that's a principal thing as well, principals and teachers generally will say, get in here, do not stand outside, bring those warm little bodies in here. And yet, yeah, still chilly when they first come in. That's just the nature of those beasts. Because, I mean, it was a wooden portable that burned, but the wooden portables were pretty darn solid. <laughs> Whereas the plastic or metal portables that we have have those lovely seams that go all the way around, and the windows and whatever. Um, but it's it's having lived through that many times, um, the children frequently don't come dressed appropriately. The the parents, yes, are upset. That particular day was incredibly cold. And that's a family's choice to keep their child home or not. But those portables do eventually warm up. Yeah. And, well, and that's and it it's not going to be immediate. It's not going to be when they walk in. And yes, I've seen my breath in my portable and I've I've perspired well, tremendously as and, well. And, you know, <laughs> we, we started building these uh, really repairable buildings as because we didn't have the money to mm -hmm. build right. the buildings. That's right. And we it's just too quickly. It, it kind of um, it was like rabbits. It just started, they multiplied fast. And and I know the bad thing is, you know, the insulation, the, the cold air, I, right. I mean, it, they're hard to heat up. They, yeah. yeah, but once once you get them into that, that yeah. Uh, once you get them working, I just didn't once know how long you have to turn it on before to get it decent by the time the kids. Yeah, I'm saying a couple about. hours. I mean, that's for a couple hours. We usually have custodial staff that are early anyways yes. on the okay. flex schedules they're that are prepared to run. So six. I'm trying to make sure that it's up for order. Right before that time. Okay. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. So D1 is um, consideration. Uh, Mr. Superintendent, before you get there, you wanted me to remind you about the uh, bus driver trainer okay. position. Okay. Is that on allocation? It will be once you have the discussion. Did we already? So we approved, right, we approved so the job discussion. description. Before I go to, for discussion on the consent agenda, we are so Mr. 
Fitzpatrick will be leaving as the Director of Transportation. We were seeking to put Mr. Sweat in the interim position. And since he's going to an interim position, we would not be filling the supervisor role that he's currently sitting in. Instead, what we'd like to do is, is take the remainder of the salary for the remainder of the year is to bring on board two trainers so we can expedite the training process for our bus drivers. Right now, it's taken six to eight weeks to train bus drivers because the individuals that are providing the professional development are driving all day, and then they have a two-hour window they can do training, and they get to go drive again. So they're driving in the morning and in the afternoon, and the only time they can do PD is in the middle of the day. So someone who aspires to become a bus driver has to be, has to go six weeks and you know two hours a day, and that's the only uh, opportunity we have. So by moving to adding the two allocations, just which will be covered in the transportation's budget by using Mr. Sweat's allocation, um, we will be cost neutral and bringing those two. The job description was approved, I believe, in December, and. Uh, these two individuals who are currently in our um, in our uh, infrastructure organization now are bus drivers. And we'd like to well, we like to interview and find the best candidates to, to move to a training process where we have two full time individuals on board to train, and then I think we can get it cut it down from six to eight weeks to two weeks to get more people involved in in, in our cohort of train of bus drivers. So it would be cost neutral for the rest of this school year. Correct. But at, the, at the end of the year, we'll go back and look and determine whether reorg determine whether continue that same structure or we need to revert back so the individuals going into this position will be fully um, will be transparent about this is from now until the end of the year for a pilot to see if, it, if we can actually expedite the the, um, the the market of bringing recruiting new bus drivers training them putting them on the road putting them in positions and uh, we'll determine at the end of the year whether or not the the reorg will need to take place and they'll know that if, if it doesn't work then they'll transition back to, to their current bus driver roles how many bus drivers are we short right now? Um, I think we're pretty good. I mean, we always we're always looking to add um, uh, substitute bus drivers. We're trying to we want to have 25. And I think right now we're we're around 20, 17 to 20. So it's getting so, better. So we're getting better, and um, I think we're only going to get better as we approve to to move the scale. So I noticed on this personnel consent there's a whole lot higher if you go. Yeah, we're really higher. Now. The way down at the bottom of the, Dar like, 83 pages. Yeah. Daryl Sweat, yeah. has, Sweat has, has taken his entire time to, to recruit and gain access to more people, so we're getting better. So we're not going to get those phone calls from softball parents? Uh -huh, I hope so. I hope not. 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 Uh, it's baseball, so I mean, track, baseball, softball, I mean, it was, the whole spring is just... I get hammered. <laughs> so hopefully, fingers crossed. I got to run to the grocery store. I got to do online shopping <laughs> when it comes to, to travel time. Um, okay, D1 was consideration was put on by, I think it was Continent. I, um, I'd like to speak on this. Not the item because I know we'll discuss it on the board floor, but um, I object to this being placed on the agenda less than the 14 day notice. And when our policy says an item has to be submitted in writing 14 days prior to the agenda, and it's my understanding that it came in on Friday, which is 13 days. So I would like to ask the chairman, um, because I consider this an illegal item, to remove this and let Ms. Condon bring it back next month with the 14-day notice. Mr. Jagger, would you like to address this? Um, she said I, it was illegal. Our policy says, the superintendent, I'll read the whole section to you. The superintendent shall establish the agenda for school board, whoops, let me get that. for the school board meetings in collaboration with the board chair. Board members may add items to the agenda for the board action. No agenda item may, no agenda item submitted by a board member may be removed from the agenda without the board member's consent. Members of the public may submit agenda items to the superintendent or any board member to be considered for inclusion in, an, in the agenda. Any item to be considered for inclusion on the agenda of a regular school board meeting shall be submitted to the superintendent's office no later than 14 days prior to the meeting at which consideration is desired. Such requests shall be in writing. Prior to each board meeting and before the publication of the agenda, the superintendent shall review the agenda, including all backup material with the chair, superintendent, and or school board. Member May, with the approval of the school board, with the approval of school board, introduce an emergency item not on the agenda. 
the agenda for regular and which that meeting shall be posted for the public and other parties seven days in advance of the meeting. And as soon as possible, but not less than 48 hours prior to any special meeting called for soon before statute 1001.372, subparagraph 1. After the agenda has been posted, changes shall be made only for good cause as determined by the person designated to preside and the cause shall be stated in the record. No action shall be taken by the school board on any item unless the item is shown on the agenda or amendment thereto and the back of the title adequate for the informed decision is delivered to the school board member. The school board members at least 48 hours prior to the meeting at which the action is to be taken. This provision shall not apply in cases in which a special, in which the school board determines by a separate vote that an emergency as defined in paragraph 1.02 for a statute. Two of these rules does exist. These rules shall not preclude the right of any citizen to address the school board in accordance with the board. And this was amended January 1, 2015, and the board, four of us, amended this. And at the time, if you all remember, it actually said citizens may submit items to our agenda. And we removed that, but we kept the 14 days. Now, I know we've had a workshop where we've discussed changing that, but we're not voted on yet. So right now, we're operating under our existing policy. That's actually not true because, um, I mean, I, I'm fine with whatever you want to do. Obviously, you two had a conversation because that's the way that you would know it was submitted Friday. Uh, no, but I met with Mr. I did not have a conversation, and I don't appreciate you accusing me of something unethical. My, no, me, let, let me finish. Let me finish. Okay, I met fair. with the superintendent, and I specifically asked him because you announced it he at the last meeting. The superintendent said, didn't get my email. He didn't know when I sent it. I sent it to Mrs. Bush and to and Mrs. I called Stutter, Mrs. Bush on Friday. And Mrs. And Bush Bush and I had a conversation about it, and I had to get the wording of this agenda item from Mr. Daggett. And I'm fine to take it off. You guys could take it off. But I will say, when you were chair, you added something 48 hours in advance. And I don't remember exactly what the item was, but I remember us no. sitting at an agenda review, and there was something added within 48 hours. But Only if it was something that the superintendent brought forth that was necessary that no, had it to be was, added. Not an item from me. But yes, it was. It was no. something that you had gone back and asked for. But I really, I mean. It was for me, the GPS system. And it was on 48. It was no, it wasn't. a week before. There was something yeah. else. Was something. Ms. Bush, was there anything, because you brought this to my attention the other day through a conversation. So, And I asked you to look at if there was anything that... Um, that we have done in the gym review because I honestly couldn't remember if we've added or not added. And uh, the Synovia item was actually added so this what three, was days, talking to. three days oh, before good. the agenda was posted. Well, three days before the meeting was held, it was mm -hmm. the February 26th meet, uh, the February 6th meeting. And the agenda item was added on February the 3rd. And so an item was added three days before the meeting. But it wasn't on the February agenda. It was removed. If you go back and you look at the minutes for February, Zenobia was removed. We voted. It was on the March agenda, and then Mrs. Bolton put it on April. So March, we voted well, March to, April. to April. cancel April. the contract, and April, mm -hmm. Mrs. Bolton put it on to rescind the vote, or I yep. forget the exact wording. February, it was on the February agenda review, but for some reason it was withdrawn from the February regular meeting. Because I went back and looked. And Ms. Condon, to answer your question, I met with Mr. Davis on Wednesday for our one-on-one, -on -one, and I asked if you had put it on because you mentioned it at the meeting prior. Mm -hmm. I then saw our agenda published on Friday, on Wednesday. He said, no, nothing had come in. And when I saw it published on Friday, I called Ms. Bush and I said, when was this submitted? And she said it was submitted on Friday. So that's how I know it was submitted on Friday. Well, the item that I'm talking about that you added at the last minute on the agenda was on the November, um, date of the meeting is the November, um, November 2nd, regular school board meeting, and the item that was added at the last minute was um, readjustment of scores used for teacher evaluation. But if y'all don't want to have been something that the superintendent brought. No, it wasn't. It was um, when it was the, it was the um, 
difference in the cut scores and you wanted to see if the board could do anything for the teachers that that it lowered their scores and we hadn't talked about it ahead of time again if the board doesn't well, want to entertain this the board I'm wants to allow fine. it it's fine I just um and I'm sorry, I, I misspoke too because it was the April 6, 2017 agenda. This is the agenda. It was added April the 3rd, and it is on the agenda, and it was actually acted on and voted on. I'm, I'm I brought it to the board the and, and asked and said because Ms. Bowling was new in the board through consensus. And I haven't written anything. So I had gone in if the board wants to allow it, it's fine. I just feel that. While our policy says 14 days, we should do the 14 days. I, I understand the policy, and I'm hoping that we have a workshop soon. Well, we did. To No, another, because we, we've already gotten a response from Mr. Agata, and we as a board have not. Right, mm -hmm. that's cool. Yeah. And, and the fact that when you brought it up at the end of the meeting, and then I saw it in the minutes as well, mm -hmm. I assume. Uh, personally, this is just me, I assumed it was a done deal that we would be doing that because you had brought it up and you had specifically asked, I would like to see this on the next, I'm, I'm sorry, I don't remember, recall your exact words, mm -hmm. but you had said something to the effect of, I would like to see this on the next agenda for the next board meeting. So I just thought, wait, well, I guess this is going to be coming back up. And then when I saw it in the minutes, mm -hmm. I thought, oh, okay, that's, there it says, and and that's true. Ms. Condon did that, say that she would be bringing and it I, back. I didn't but realize our policy the says writing submitted business. Submitted in writing. Because I've never so. done anything in writing. So. Does, does that not count as writing? No, it doesn't. Okay. No. And, it, and you know, there was three weeks, and if everybody Should wants to allow, that's question. fine. Okay. Okay. Do you want to say anything? I, did. I have just one comment. Okay. Um, and I understand your concern about the policy, and I mm -hmm. agree that we need to follow whatever our policy is. Policy I, I agree. Um, however, I feel like this is a time-sensitive issue because if, and I don't know how anybody else is going to vote on this, but I'm just saying, there will be a legal fee paid between this coming meeting and the next. So if we decide that we want to do something different than we're currently doing, we may end up paying money that we wouldn't have otherwise spent. So I feel like it is time sensitive that we handle this once and for all prior to that um, bill coming in. Okay. Madam Chair, may I yes. comment? Mr. Bagger. Um, so two, two things that I, that I wanted to speak to here, and one of them is there is an added sense of urgency here. Um, and there, there was a, a comment um, as to the perceived illegality. Uh, of this agenda item. It's my job to make sure that there are no uh, illegal or unauthorized moves um, by the board in any type of action. In my view, um, I didn't draft this. There's no question about it that um, 1.02E4, as currently written, is ambiguous. Even since the time that I've been here, I, I recall that there were some debates as to the meaning and application of the 14 day. For what it's worth, um, again, I didn't draft it, so I don't know the intent of the drafters. But I read this item uh, as a 14 day deadline being applicable to public uh, agenda items. That, that is, that, and I'll, I'll explain why. Um, here, you have parallel uh, sentences starting out with board members may add items to the agenda. Uh, members of, and then it goes on to say members of the public may submit agenda items to the superintendent. On the board. Okay, that, that is meaningful to me. Um, requests are, are, are to be submitted to the, the superintendent in writing, not less than 14 days, to be considered for inclusion. There's no such to be considered language applicable to a board member. It, it, it doesn't square up with, with my experience of, of how boards operate. Uh, that is, a member of the commission or a member of the board may add without consideration of, of some other board member. Um, whereas agenda items submitted by the public, of course, may they may be uh, considered. Um, 
I, I think, honestly, read as a whole, um, I don't see the 14-day uh, prohibition being applicable to board member agenda items. Um, there appears to be, I can't put my finger on it, uh, when and where, but there appears to be uh, some um, inconsistency, if you will, in the past, not by just by this board, but others, uh, and you can blame it on uh, ambiguity. Good news is we're, we're looking to clean it up, and, and we workshop this ad nauseum. Um, I, I, this is not to say that the uh, seven-day rule uh, can and should apply uh, to board member items. There is an applicable. And then another thing I wanted to say, again, looking at this in context, a 14-day, you all meet on a monthly uh, period, in a 14-day prohibition, consider what a tight timeline uh, that imposes upon you in developing uh, an agenda. Uh, you know, you finish one school board meeting, you would have, if this 14-day uh, rule strictly applied and clearly applied, you would have all of five, uh, well, ten business days, maybe less <laughs> sometimes, uh, to, to get your agenda items in. So I, I see that as being unmanageable. So I, I say that in, in so far as I do not see this as, as an illegal, with all due respect, not as an illegal or unauthorized uh, action or move, motion I should say. Uh, and second, I, I share, and I want to just put this out there, there is an urgency, uh, personally speaking, if you will, because you know we're dealing with Thir uh, 13 other school boards, 12 other school boards, and I'm dealing with uh, lots of different school board attorneys, assistant school board counsel, and the uncertainty um, complicates um, uh, strategy and you know whether Clay will be on board for X, Y, and Z. I just put that out there simply to, to add that practical effect of delay. Um, and I think that's it. Thank you. Okay. Mr. Davis, do you want to say anything? I'm not finished. I, I'd like to address Mr. Let me, Jagged. I want this to see if Mr. Davis has something to say, and then you can speak again. Um, from my side, it will be the board's decision. Um, from I do believe that, and I, and I wish I had time to do my research, of, I think we put things on at this agenda <coughs> review item. So um, from what I hear from Mr. Daggett, and, and I'm not a lawyer, please know, I'm interpret it, it, it sounds like the board has a decision, I mean, can make a decision to, to move forward with it, but that's going to be this third decision. Okay, Ms. Um, I I'm fine with what the board decides to do and move forward with it, and actual discussion of the item would be that night. Um, but Mr. Daggett, I don't agree with the interpretation. I think, you know, this, the intent behind this one, it was written, and four of us board members were on the board at the time. 14 days is what we have followed. 14 days for Mr. Su the superintendent and staff to have items in. Um, it makes sense, and we are going to work on it, and, and I agree that we need to clean up our policy. So where we go with from here. The one other thing I would like to point out, and Ms. Condon, your name is on this, so you might want to reread it, but um, the piece itself has a couple of errors in it. One being, um, it refers to you as um, school board member and co-chair. So that, that, that was my nine error. months, we're not that co-chairs, that's sloppy work. The other thing is under recommendations, as board members, we know your recommendation, you're putting it on. That section is only for the superintendent when he's bringing items to school board members for recommendations. So I would recommend that they just clean that up so that this is now a public record, so that this public record goes forward in the right format. That's all. Okay, okay, does anyone else want to speak before I say something? Everybody speak now or hold your peace. Okay. This is one of the most frustrating weekends that I have had trying to um, figure out what is the, the, the correct, the right thing to do. Um, I have spoken extensively, extensively to Mrs. Bush to try to get 
a timeline in my mind, and I want to share it with y'all so we all have the same understanding. Um, on Wednesday, uh, per Mr. Daggett, you probably left a voicemail for him, uh, and I guess it was to discuss this issue. Um, and perhaps, and I'm, I'm guessing on this, I'm guessing that your voicemail, I think Daggett had called, Mr. Daggett had called you and inquired, are you going to do, are you putting this on the agenda? You mentioned it last month, is that right? I, I vaguely Did you recall call her first? Some, yeah. some discussion. And so then there was this voicemail and you said, yes, I want to put it on. So, just, I don't have people talking about other people's voicemails. No, no, no. This is information I got from Mr. Daggett and Mrs. Bush. I was trying to gather a timeline so we could all understand how this situation evolved. If you will just spare, just let me go. That night at 7.46, Mr. Daggett sent a draft of this wording to Ms. Condon. That was Wednesday night. The, uh, the... January 18th, Thursday, was the 14 days before the board meeting. He sent you this draft Wednesday night, the 17th. Nothing came in. Ms. Bush was kept, you know, we talked many times. Well, is she, you know, she wants it on there. Does she, we don't have any backup. What is the, you know, what are we doing? Um, Friday afternoon at 2.18, you submitted the wording that Mr. Daggett had sent to you on Wednesday night. Then an hour later, as per the usual procedure, around three, she, Ms. Bush, released the agenda. And it's on there. And I said to her, we've got a placeholder here. She's going to be sending, you know, in whatever. But it didn't happen. So in that effect, it did violate this, quote, 14 days that Mrs. Um, Caracas is talking about. But so then I went and I pulled... Remember when Mr. Daggett gave us the the old language from this policy, mm -hmm. and then he gave us the uh, 11, I can't read your writing, 9, 13 yes. uh, revision. And this is when we went through and looked at it, and uh, we did never vote on it. So we legally are still acting under this policy. Therein lies the problem. This policy, this agenda, section four, is probably the most poorly written section, and I hope the rest of our policy doesn't turn to be out like this. This can be read in two ways. It, it is, it is uh, ambiguous. It is not clear. Uh, all week, I bet I've read it a hundred times over the weekend. You can read it one way, and I would say, Ms. Condon, I'm sorry, it wasn't 14 days. You had three weeks after our board meeting, to, or two weeks, whatever, to submit this. For some reason, nothing was done on Thursday, 14 days before, and it was done Friday afternoon. Um, that, that was a, a stickler in my mind. On the other hand, when you read through this policy, and, and I have spoken at length to Mr. Daggett, to Mr. Uh, at, uh, Davis, <laughs> I want to call you Mr. Addison, no, and uh, Ms. Bush, <laughs> trying to <clears throat> work my way as chairman through how to resolve this problem. My biggest concern was we are in the middle of going to master board training, and I have tried every way I know how for us to have more peace and harmony and, and um, collegiate working together, collegially working together, um, this kind of blows it. So mm -hmm. next master board, we need to have a, another talk. Um, but if you read this, one way you feel like you should say this. If I read it another way, um, no action be, shall be taken by the school board in the item unless the item is shown on the agenda or an amendment thereto and the backup material adequate for an informed decision is delivered to school board members at least 48 hours prior to the meeting. Then I've been thinking about, you know, over the years at different things that, that have come up and, uh, and tried to find some kind of way to be fair about this. 
um, my heart of hearts, but what I really think the problem evolved from is when we did this policy, we did not have a gender review meeting. Be before that, Ms. Bush would post the agenda for the week before the meeting to the public. The day before that is when, if the years I was chairman, would come down and review the agenda. Everything was there. Eight, that was eight days before. Eight days. But I would always come down, review the agenda, then it was published to the world. We came and met, it was done. Now where the glitch has come in, and this is what we are going to have to address in a workshop in my opinion, is now we have agenda review meetings. That we didn't think about how this works with our policy. This came to me in the shower yesterday. <laughs> That's where the glitch started. That's 10 days before. Because we have this agenda review meeting on Tuesday. The Friday before that, at 3 o'clock, Ms. Bush releases the agenda to the board and to staff. So we will have a few days to get ready for this meeting. Fine. That's good. But if a board member wants to put an item on the agenda, you know, my preference would be that it be on the agenda today, the day we do the review. So we can get a full <coughs> picture. I, I, I know that legally we can put things on in the, for the good of the school district, emergency and so forth, you know, up to 48, hour, 48 hours before. But I think where our snag is, is that if we come here and we have a review and then a board member decides, um, you know, Monday, I want to add this item to the agenda. Well, you, do we allow that? Do we not allow that? Can a board member put something on? Here's questions I want you to think about. Can a board member put things on the agenda up to 48 hours before the meeting? Um, if not, when does a board member, what, is there a deadline for the board member to put an item on the agenda? Do y'all want it to be by today? Um, Ms. Bush now on this Friday or Thursday releases it to the public, right? The, the whole, right. The whole smooth. And it goes out to the world. We definitely, in my opinion, need to have everything that we can. There's emergencies that come up for the good of this group. But for all practical purposes, when it goes out to the public, mm -hmm. I would love to know that everything's on the agenda, you know. Um, but we can, we do have, have that 48 hours, but the agenda review has, it's a good thing. I, we can get things worked out instead of being in the regular board meeting, but I suggest that we all have been remiss and not cleaning this up and, and getting it so that we don't have this type of situation happen again. So I, I you know, y'all are, we'll talk about it, but I thought, well, you know, we could talk about it at the board meeting, but I don't think any of us want this to go out on in our regular board meeting. It, it's not a good idea. So my only suggestion is that we have a workshop, that we have time for each of us to really think about the process from when she releases it to the board and staff, to our agenda review, to the release to the public, and at what point are we going to say to the board members, unless there's an emergency, you know, we would like to have your item in. Uh, that's the only fair way, and y'all probably have some other ideas, and I'm open to them, but I do not want us to go through this again. So, and not only just this section, but, and I didn't get the chance, Mr. Daggett, to go back and look. I don't know what else is in section one other than this. Is there more in section one? Yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah, okay. stuff, yeah. Well, I would suggest we have a workshop, get section one cleaned up, put it on the agenda, I'll put it on the agenda for us to approve section one. And then I've spoken with Mr. Davis, and he has said that he will talk to his staff 
because we need to have, we need to move on taking each section, the HR, uh, operations, finance, and we need to have, and you know, I know they're overworked, but it, it wouldn't take that long to go yes, through and see some, some changes <coughs> that they would like to see made, and we could workshop those, but it's very important that we do this policy cleanup, and uh, I think because of the nature of this, that we need to clean up the section, the, mm -hmm. the uh, first section, uh, organization of the district school system, mm -hmm. and uh, I would like to suggest, if, if y'all agree, that we set a workshop and and get this done, and uh, and ask Mr. Daggett to, to go through the rest of section one, and, and if there's anything that he proposes changing, and we can read through it too, and uh, but it's. This isn't something to just think about for five minutes. I'm asking each board member, go through the process of how a board member is to put things on the agenda. It's very clear in our policy about citizens and what they can do. Just yesterday I explained to a citizen that they had missed the 14 days, you know, so they're going to speak three, min three minutes. You know, but I think we're clear on the public, but we're not clear on ourselves. And this is going to cause hurt feelings and uh, dysfunction among the board. So please, let's have a workshop and get this cleaned up. Mm -hmm. And let's try our best to work as a board and remember that we're here for the kids and to support education. This is very distracting and embarrassing that we are going through this. So, would you put your calendar, get your calendars out, and let's find a workshop day, please. I know this month has been <laughs> And we want to give Mr. Daggett a, a little bit of time. We won't meet tomorrow, because I want you to have a chance to go through the rest of Section 1, and if there's anything that you want to re revise in that, or propose that we revise, be ready. So I don't think it'll take you that long to be ready for us. I'll, I'll do my darndest. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> but we are. We've got the board meeting on the first. Um, let's see. We've got the Monday night. We've got a the fifth is a chorus concert. Ooh, but six is science fair. The six is the science fair. At Monday. <coughs> Monday during the day, or is there the fifth? How, about, how does be, that? I'll be in Washington, D.C. with the FSBA. On the um, fifth? Okay. So Tuesday's the Science uh, Fair. Wednesday. We have the FSBA Legislative Days. Uh, Wednesday, Thursday. Why don't we look at the following week? Friday, mm -hmm. we have the talking out at uh, Discovery no, Oak. The people will still be in Tallahassee. Huh? Few folks will still be in Tallahassee. Okay. No, we're, we're both coming back. Sure not to. Oh, you yeah. are. We're yeah. gonna. Are you staying Friday? There's nothing uh, Friday. I have a foundation meeting at eight thirty. <coughs> Ed Foundation here. Yeah, the Ed Foundation. Well, so how long did they last? An hour, hour and a half. Yeah, till ten, and then the tapping you notes know, at noon. At noon. We could do it in the afternoon, maybe on Friday. Friday afternoon. It's a fun time to have a workshop. <laughs> <laughs> how about Monday the twelfth? Is everybody going to be in town? Mm -hmm. I'm good. I'm good. Okay. I'm good. What? Day. All right. Uh, oh, we mentor on Monday. So if we did it at what about nine. in the afternoon? We could do it at 9 o'clock. We could do it. Oh. How about 9 o'clock Monday? Great. How about 9 o'clock Monday morning? Do you have big meetings at 9 o'clock Monday morning? Uh, I've got uh, calibration walks the entire month of February, so, but I'll have my team lead those and I'll come here. Okay. 9 o'clock Monday, the 12th. And where do you want to meet uh, for this workshop? Is here good? Yes, ma'am. Okay. I mean, this. I'll check to make sure the room's available, but it probably is. And if it's not, we could meet. Is that room? No. Just, just for policy one. Just, policy. just for policy. Yeah. The one. The, right. the right. whole first section. All right. What do they call it? Section one. Organization. Yeah. Section one. Organization. Of the district school system. Right, so the 12th. so somewhere okay, Monday the twelfth at nine o'clock in this room, unless Karen tells us we've got to go somewhere else. But I, I think that that it's it will be a pre appointment room. Yes, ma'am. We'll find a we'll, we'll, yeah, we'll find a room. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think that uh, that.
that will do us all good to get this cleared up because yeah. Yes. We don't need this kind of mess. Uh, so we're moving forward, forward and leaving it on the agenda. And I, uh, one thing I've been taught in the 25 years is when I have some a concern or or something, I go to the school board attorney and I act on the advice of the school board attorney. He told me that legally it could remain on the agenda, and it's because of the poorly written policy that can be, in, in my opinion, be written, it can be construed either way. Um, I don't, I mean, we could put it off another month, but I, you know, I figure uh, these board members know how they feel about this. Let's just get it over with. I agree. So All just right. let's get it over with and go on because the majority <laughs> rules and we proceed on. Leave it on the agenda. All right, D2 is a strategic plan uh, that will be from 2018 to 2020. This will be a, uh, presented as a number of goals with initiatives and projects. This will be an annual document that we revisit um, as we obtain initiatives. We selectively abandon initiatives um, in order for us to, to have a strategic map for where we're going. My only concern with this document is, and I think it's great, I think mm -hmm. that I love the detail, is some of these things, um, because it, it is very detailed, if by approving, um, and it's a question, I don't know the answer, um, if by approving the strategic plan, if we are, in a sense, approving everything that's in it. And the reason mm -hmm. that I say that is because there are initiatives in here that cost money. Sure. And right. we haven't looked at those. And in fact, there are initiatives in here um, and forgive me, Mr. McCauley, this is not a poke at you, but there's acronyms that I don't know what they are. Right. And so, right. I, know, so I, know, I know. And, <laughs> and, and good, this, is, this is just yes. vision work. So if we don't, um, if we do not tackle, let's just say if it's 1.32 and we, and we don't tackle that initiative, but because of lack of funding, we will just note it and we'll continue, it will continue to be on the next year's initiative and, and, and project list in order for us in to move forward. If we get to a point where it's on there for two years and we just don't have the money or we can't do it, then we will selectively ban it and take it off and replace it with something else we believe is, is uh, centric to our work. So this is a working document? Uh, yes, ma'am. It's okay. going to be a, a working document for the next, for annually, mm -hmm. that, I mean, to be reviewed. May I ask you something? I'm oh, sorry. Go, Go ahead, Ms. Kerfess. Go ahead. I'm just, I'm glad to see something like this. We've not had a, a real strategic plan like this, I mean, probably ever. They've brought things in the past, but it was not quite on this scale where we're going to see the progression of it throughout the year. So I'm actually I'm <coughs> glad that this is coming to us. It, it gives us things to look at that we weren't aware of what's going on and, and you know, different programs <coughs> and whatnot. So um, I just want to compliment it. So I have two questions. Yes, ma'am. First, um, I guess a, a, is it a state requirement that the board approve this? Because we don't own it, it's no, it, it's not a state requirement. We want to you have a you want to have a strategic plan just for a vision of the work. Mm -hmm. And um, my reason for pushing it out to all the board members is for to provide any type of feedback or revisions of this document so that we can all own this together. Or if you wanted to selectively abandon something or add something or reword something, I, I didn't. I just did. Me and my team and led this work to put it together so that we can continue to have a blueprint. Mm -hmm. But I extended it to each of you so you can have a stake in it so we can do it collectively. So it's not an action item? Um, it would be signifying you're adopting it uh, for us to lead our work for the future work for, an, for a strategic plan. It's kind of like we're going to hold them accountable yeah. to see what their you know, the report card, have they completed yeah. something, or are we good, satisfied it's a good measure. with it? And if we want to make changes to it, um, we can ask to see something different that's than correct. what's there. Well, that's the way I read it. And I know from FSBA, you know, talking with other districts, we're one of the few districts that doesn't really have a strategic plan every year that comes to us that we're holding our superintendent and staff, you know, accountable for. Well, did you reach that goal, that benchmark? So I guess my ask would be that if we're going to adopt it, um, or vote on whether or not to adopt it. 
I think a presentation is in order. I really feel like I need to understand exactly what you're presenting in order for me to yeah, I mean, approve or not approve. It, it, it's up to the board. I, I know I sent this out, I would say, weeks and weeks and weeks ago for feedback. Um, some of you presented feedback, some didn't present feedback, so I didn't know if you were just good with it or... Um, so. I'm open to, I will do whatever this board, at, you know, would like me to do. Ashley, we're going to get a lot of slides. We're, we're going to get a lot of slides. <laughs> we're going to get a deep, deep, deep. I guess the reason that I had my question, which I still haven't had answered, is if it is a, considered a blanket approval because of things like um, Catapult is on yeah. there. And I know sure. that that had gone back and forth sure. about approval and right. that costs money or takes right. money away from yeah. the district. Right. So if we approve this document, and then maybe Mr. Daggett needs to answer this question, I don't know, but um, if we approve the strategic plan, is it an overarching approval that we are saying yes to all of these programs, and, 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 then, all, and then obviously the funding would still have to come back for us to approve, mm -hmm. but my concern is... So can I, can I address this for you, Neil? I'm sorry, Mr. Daggett, unless you want directly, you can... Can, Your concern is is if we adopt this, do we? I answered this a minute ago. The answer is no. This is a fluid document. You could, if it, you, by approving this, you're not saying that this is actually gonna, this is our vision for our work, and you're not saying that this is going to happen, this is going to happen. Because at the end of the day, if I if I see the, I give you an example, catapult. So we have around 40 to 50 kids uh, that are in our, in uh, Clay County, and some are not even connected to us. They're on different graduating cohorts. That are in catapult, but if, if I decide that that I could duplicate those services internally, then I will come to the board and say I, I want to terminate the contract, and then I want to adjust the strategic plan, stating that I want to abandon use of catapult, and I want to think about rebuilding uh, the mentality of catapult internally. So that would that would uh, adjust it. So this do document is going to be fluid. It's not going to handcuff us financially. Uh, there. You will see that we will achieve some of these uh, initiatives and targets, and some we may not ever get to because of funding. I think you're misunderstanding my question. So, my question isn't how you will use the document. I, I have the utmost confidence that you will professionally use the document and not hold it over our heads. I wasn't trying to suggest that at all. My question would be is because we are the the presiding board over the school district, if in essence, our approval of the document doesn't mean legally that those things are all approved. Do you, do you follow yeah, yeah. my question? I, I, I still think the answer is no to that. I, it's just a document for a strategic vision. Let me vision. on this one. This is a plan. This is, as you said, fluid. That's not saying we're going to do everything in this plan, and we may not do some of the things in the plan because the budget and other things straight this and let me let me let me give you an example back long ago I was president of the PTA at OPE back when it was a neighborhood school long before anyone thought of the word concept school we were the only school in Clay County that didn't have a cafeteria if you'll remember that little building in the center of the campus that's sunken down that's where we had to put on plays and productions and you know how small that building is. We, my board and I went down to the school board office over here. Jesse Tynes was the superintendent, and thank goodness he just lived a block and a half from the school. So that, that helped, because that school was <coughs> here to his heart. And I can, I can almost tell you all the board members who were sitting there, Gene Barnabas, Mark and Matt Swart, you know, this was the old days. We went down before that board, and we pleaded our case. Our school was built in 1923, I think it was. We are the only school in Clay County that doesn't have a cafetoria. Everybody else has stage. I mean, it was nice. This school had been built so long ago. I mean, it was just literally falling apart. We said, we're to the point. Please, either fix us up or close us up. Because this, this is not good for our kids. I, at that time, not knowing anything about the functioning of the school board other than I was shaken and scared to death, I didn't know what we had done until after I got on the school board. Because I want you to know that Mr. Tynes and that board somehow 
And we used to do strategic plans five years at a time. It was five years out, but it was always drop one off, add another year. The very next year, I don't know how it happened to this day, but the very next year, that cafetoria that you see at OPE right today is what was built that next year. And y'all know how impossible that's got to be. We don't, we don't talk about something and build it the very next year. It just, you know, it takes, there's too much paperwork and hobbledygook to go on through. But that's what I'm saying is the strategic plan can change due to need or budget or whatever. So I'm not excited at all about having any, I don't have any problem with approving this strategic plan. It's, it, it's, it's what we used to call our five-year plan. It was presented to us every year. You know? That wasn't my question. My question, I actually agreed with Ms. Karakas that I liked having the details to start the started. Path. It's very different than what we've had. Yeah. So my question was, inadvertently, if we adopt this plan as a board, are we approving programs? Programming. No. So through the chair, I can add a sentence on there to, that addresses that. I should, if you I could, should if, ask if, the question. I think it was appropriate to ask the question. Uh, uh, saying, I, I don't think why would we is, have to bring that up before the board when it happened? Right. Right. If we have already approved it. You're not approving right. that in this preach plan, but maybe you could put a sentence in there, a, a legal type sentence that doesn't obligate us to doing these projects or whatever. I just think we could make it an information only item. I don't know why we've we always approved the strategic plan. Yeah, we always have. As, as far yeah. as the difference with this really is valuable. we're going to see results. Mm -hmm. Whereas in the past, <coughs> as the Stuttered said, it's five years, it would go and drop off. But we were never informed did we meet any of those benchmarks and those goals. And so by bringing this every year to us um, with the, the format that you have, we're going to. We're going to probably get very many slides at one time on how <laughs> you know, reach the, the goals. But I'm, I'm excited for that. I look at this more as a report card of, of what the, the benchmarks and what the goals are. And I understand what Ms. Condon is saying, especially with the catapult. Is this locking us in almost to like a second contract that we haven't signed? But I don't really, um, I don't see it that way, but it probably could have some kind of language added, you know, for the financial yeah. aspect yeah. of it. I'll work on it. Yeah. Another comment about it. Many of these things are not necessarily measurable unless we get data with it. And I know that a lot I'm of sure our data, data. Um, <laughs> well, but that's, that's how we determine if we're being successful or not. Mm -hmm. And in providing and implementing professional development, for instance, for ACPERTS at boot camps, I mean, we can say, OK, we've provided these sorts of things. So hopefully the additional data beyond that, and yeah. this is how our scores have improved right. based on how we've right. done this. And so you would be just, able to and see. And I know within that initiative yeah. progress, we can, we'll yeah. see a check mark, but it will be helpful to follow this right. through with as a strategic plan. We should have measurable data right. built into this so yeah. that we can understand that yes, these initiatives yeah. were successful. So, the so that in the future, if we get an initiative and it wasn't successful in the same manner we can say right. we don't want to do that anymore right. this looks dumb sure. you know? and, and through the chair good point anytime that i go to give you quarterly or by by annual reports it all be supported by how many kids were impacted by boot camps how many mm -hmm. kids passed uh, college rating assessments all that stuff so we can determine whether or not we're effective okay i, I don't mean to beat a dead horse here <laughs> i'm just i'm thinking also back to some of our fsba training where they talked about um some of the financial like monthly reports how we don't necessarily need to take action on those they could be information items and i just don't want us to take official board action unless it's necessary i think to answer your question mm -hmm. the strategic plan if you notice has been built from 18 to 22 and 2018 this is the initiative for 17-18 um, we're looking at this over the next five-year period we haven't done one for five. I mean, literally, it was voted on five years ago. And it's, I believe that I remember strategic plans being produced and provided, and it makes it look good that we have a, a plan for no, no other reason than I think the vote is more of an assurance saying we agree with what he's doing, we agree with the idea of the plan, go forth and conquer, and let's, you know. 
I we're agree. behind you in that respect. I think that's, 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 truly, that's, truly, that's truly it. I mean, from my perspective. I know you want to be cautious, but I think you're being overly cautious. Mm -hmm. this, yeah. is, yeah, this is not. Is there some I think the difference is, I think the difference is that the reason we were cautioned against approving the financial reports is because that is, in essence, certifying them that they're correct, right? We don't have to wait to know that. But this doesn't have the same action with the Auditor General and, and the reviews and things. The, you know, this isn't an audited item right. where the financial reports are audited. That, that would be us certifying those are correct, which mm -hmm. would be, could be a little sticky. Good point. Good point. Mr. Davis, proceed, please. Okay. D3 is, uh, is, that right? yeah. is uh, special action. There'll, there'll be some special actions once the investigation is concluded. And you'll be contacting I'll, each of us? I'll each one of you. Okay. We'll look forward to it. We thought we had a whole month. No, ma'am. Sorry. And now there's one placeholder, but y'all are okay with us adding multiple items that would be an A or a B or a C. Oh, human resources? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just just put a put an A and a B, and if we don't get a B, you can take it off. You know, but that'll give you a place for it. So we'll need a C, too. I see. A, B, C, D. A, B, C? D. 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 Did you say D? D. Yes, ma'am. Well, and I guess that was the reason for my question. Are you okay with with one placeholder since we don't know, yeah. I mean... No, yeah. Well, that's kind of what it you know, is, that, it's just with the Human Resource Special Action A. I just always have looked at that as a placeholder for all the ones that you need to bring once the investigation's been done. We're good. Mm -hmm. just, um, because there's, I realize with those types of weeks. things, it, sometimes it is, get, it gets down to the last minute, so we've mm -hmm. we got to have it. Okay. Thank you. All right. Mm -hmm. All right, D4, public hearing for approval of the science textbook adoption. Grades K-12. D-5 is the public hearing for boundaries for Discovery Oaks Elementary. I want to know what these gentlemen uh, want to speak about. That's it. All right. So, um, <laughs> oh, my so you're not even on the agenda. Don't I didn't video. put it. I, I intentionally didn't put this on the agenda because I wanted it. Uh, the agenda's closed, correct? No, we're not finished. Oh, we're still in a meeting. Okay. You want me to close it? Well, then, we can't, then we can't discuss Okay, then. It is, and so, this is an item that uh, was brought to me <laughs> by um, by operations. And um, it, there's a parcel, and Mr. Foss is here as well. There's a parcel in the back of Tynes um, Elementary School that is gated, I think it's around two acres, that, um, that we don't use and we can't use in order to build. Uh, we were approached by the Clay County uh, Utility Authority that would like to purchase um, this uh, uh, piece of parcel in the back of the tines. I point, sorry, I'm in the back of the school. Sorry, in the, they may have a slide in the back of the um, of the school. And right now, there's currently some water tanks, I believe, in the front of this part, uh, the front of the school that they have access to, and this would remove the front um, the the front interactions, and then take it to the back of the school. For me, uh, you know, from my side, I just wanted to bring it to the board. I'm indifferent because I have uh, why I appreciate the continued partnership between Clay County Utility Authority. I think they do awesome work with us. Um, this is going to be, they're going to have access to the back of the school. Um, I don't know how much access they would need in order to create, I think they're going to have water structures and water tanks in the back. They're going to be uh, not uh, in the direction they're currently. I think they're... Right now, they're horizontally placed, and they're going to be put them up vertically. So, you know, you may get some pushback from community members of what's going on and what is on that parcel. And then, for me, I've got to figure out how we continue to allow the, the authority to, to gain access to the back of the property while we have in school. So, so what um, are you asking? Are you asking so to I'm, add this to the agenda? I'm asking the board's feedback of whether or not this is a... Uh, we can't. Can we discuss that in a, I, this I workshop? No, this would be, a, this is an item okay. we have to vote on. Okay, then. Which means general meeting. Right, then I, I just, just need bring a clear here. explanation. Um, and I'll let Mr. Uh, the Fossen speak, I I have, speak to it. But real quick, back in, in June, we were having a meeting with TCUA regarding other issues. And they kind of approached us and said, hey, we got this, you have this piece of property behind Tynes. It's about an acre. It's high. If you've ever been out there, it's like eight feet above the rest of the school. Had been a drainage field at one time. 
and, and please stop me if I'm wrong at all. Uh, what they wanted to do is to put three storage tanks there for reclaimed water. <coughs> three. And uh, three storage tanks for reclaimed water. And that's really what they were asking. And they wanted to purchase that land from us. And how much? $30,000. For all, for all the, for, for one acre, for one acre. One acre, yeah. Sorry, one acre. And then the, the well, the appraisal, the, the appraisals were one was by a third, <laughs> another one was lower. It's lower. It, may I add uh, to it? Because there's a little bit more. Yeah, yeah. there yeah. probably is a lot more. Yeah. 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 Um, this, this should be on the March agenda, and we should be discussing this at a general meeting. We can and we should get the presentation at, at a general meeting, right? Um, I, I'm not comfortable. Help me through it. So, Ms. Stutter, if you want me to, to re revert and put it back, or uh, I was just bringing it for informational purposes today. I, Peggy, you listen to this. I, I personally <laughs> think that, I mean, you can give us this, we take these home their information, this, but I think that um, you should add this item to the agenda for March. For, um, well, why couldn't they do it in February? Well, it's less than 14 days. Well, that doesn't... Janice, don't... This... <laughs> just... It's a matter of principle. Just be... Well, you did it in April. I, you all, all right. voted on this, it for Mary. I'm not going <laughs> to get into it. Let's go. Mr. Davis, uh, is it uh, agreeable to the board to put it on in February? <laughs> Is it agreeable to the board to put it on in February? Why are we delaying it to March? This has been, we have not released this to the public. This is not, this agenda won't be released to the public until Thursday. Okay, well, I will add it to Friday, discussion. Thursday. Um, from Thursday, from Thursday or Friday? Thursday. 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 Right. Right. So, so, I mean, it hasn't been released to the public. Does any board member have an objection to be placing this on the agenda for February 1st? <coughs> okay, done. So, Mr. Davis, if you would submit the proper wording and so forth and so forth, and we, you, we will take these home, we can look at the pretty picture, but um, at that meeting on Thursday night, February the 1st, then uh, it would probably be a good idea for you to be there to explain to this board why we only offered $30,000 for this extra report. <laughs> you want to speak to it? Um, well, the two appraisals were done, and 30000 was the highest okay. of the two appraisals. How about telling us that on February the 1st? Right. And there's actually more there that's uh, actually to the benefit of the school board because okay. we're trying to approach this as a collaborative, so there's a win-win, both on an operational context for the school board as well as the utility authority. Um, and we can go to into that in detail at that board meeting. Okay. And that's another thing, Thank ladies, you. when you're looking at uh, Section 1, um, we've never, since we didn't, weren't even having the agenda review meetings mm -hmm. at the time we wrote that policy, yes. um, how about also addressing, like, if someone like this comes up, if we, could hear, if we could hear what he has to say now, it would help us in knowing, you know, kind of where we were before we get to the board meeting by us not being able to hear him, then we're just going to have to wait and get it on the night of the board meeting. Is so there a reason we can't hear it? I mean, we just added it to the agenda, so we're in the agenda review. Why don't we, we just go ahead and hear it? Is there any objection? I think there has been precedence in the past to have public comment at our workshops. While our policy only right. says questions only, we have made exceptions in the past mm -hmm. to have public comment. And well, he is a member of the right. public. I'll, I'll about by the board because we do have public comments on this. Mm -hmm. Well, it's school board comments, superintendent comments. We don't have, but it does say that the public can address it. And he, mm -hmm. Mr. Daggett, will I, will I be on face to let him go ahead and tell us what he wants to tell us? No, ma'am. Okay, no. go for it. <laughs> uh, good morning, and thank you for uh, having us come to talk to the school board about a proposal that we uh, uh, would like to advance if at all possible. Um, CC Way, we have had uh, operational issues in uh, Pine Ridge, Two Creeks uh, area for some time. We have been looking for property to put uh, tanks and an augmentation well to help supplement the services in that particular uh, area. Currently, we have a transfer pump 
that's in a trailer, it's trailer mounted pump, in the front of the school that helps transfer pressure or energy from one side of the system to the other side to help maintain pressures. One way for the long term operations is to put the tanks uh, in that area because of elevation, pipe sizes, etc. There's a lot of advantages to the utility. So when we were doing our due diligence, one of the things that we noticed was Tynes Elementary has an, a well and two hydro tanks that are there on school property to support the fire system for the school. Clearly the school board has operational costs that deal with that well, the hydro pneumatic tanks, etc. Our proposal is that if in the transfer of the property in the well, we'll purchase the, the, the property in the well, we will take the school board off of that well and put it onto our system because that um, our system maintains a either at or higher operational pressure to support the school. So you will have some operational costs that will come down that you won't have to maintain on a regular basis. Now for us, these will be large uh, tanks, 25 to 30 feet tall. Uh, we, are, we will obviously put security fencing around them. Um, we will also put beautification measures by putting opaque fencing. We'll put uh, shrubbery, trees, etc. to provide some beautification around it so it does provide some screen. No, there's a conservation area that is behind the school. Um, it, the site that we're looking at was used for a septic tank and drain field previously. Uh, so there would have to be, if the school board wanted to use it, there would have to be significant costs for remediation, of which we'll have to do to, to uh, put the tanks in. So are they um, fully enclosed? Fully enclosed. The tank, there's no access to the tank. They are fully enclosed, and any access to the tanks has to be done through secured hatches, okay. of which we maintain locks on both the ladders and, and mm -hmm. we also maintain security uh, measures at each of our facilities that has to deal with sensors, etc., uh, because it is illegal for uh, unauthorized personnel to access our facilities. Okay, thank you. It'll have three tanks on it. Yeah. Ultimately, we will we will begin with, with one. Uh, to support our existing um, services and then over time as the population grows toward the north side of Middleburg we will over years we will add two more tanks but the first initial construction uh, will be um, one tank one pump house okay let me ask you on here I see the bus loop at where this mm -hmm. is mm -hmm. but these two tanks down here off of Old Jennings. Those are potable water. That's your drinking water. Uh, we're looking for tanks that are reclaimed water. That is uh, um, water that moves through our wastewater treatment plants and is processed to a very high level, um, but we do not mix the reclaimed water with the potable water. And the reclaimed water is used for irrigation. Right. Yeah, I see that in some of these developments. Well, let me ask you this. So, from what I am understanding, the school district really has no use for this property. We can't. Do We're not going to. It's going to cost us a significant amount of money to even begin to address. And I was thinking the way it is located with the, with the bus loop and so forth. And I'm thinking, you know, we've got. It looks like we've got this free outdoor yes, mountain. You said this was higher. Current. It's, it's high. Mm -hmm. Is, 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 is it going to make this Will it still be high, price. or will you level it before you put a 25, 30 well, foot tank? In when there? we say it's higher, is that whole area in the school and along that area of Times Boulevard is roughly elevation 60, um, and it tapers off to other areas which are elevation 30. Um, so putting a tank near that school board gives us a higher advantage um, uh, topographically. Because we obviously we want to take advantage of gravity as much as we can. Sure. Because lower elevation elevations means bigger pumps, uh, it means more electricity, etc. So it increases our cost. And, and through the chair, this parcel is uh, currently fenced off and not being activated or used really? by anybody in the school. So it's really sometimes we get that with schools. We have quote. Yeah, areas. Yeah. Something. Some I just don't want to be a recess field that may not be used by the PE kids. I would have never. But, 
that we, three says, because there are a lot of portables out there. Or actually not portables. So we, portables. we thank you for being here, sitting through our interesting workshop today. But I think that gives us enough information. And then if any of the board has more can questions. Can I ask one question? Yeah. Is there, is there, uh, are there pumps attached to this with noise that would affect this whole? Um, we enclose all of our pumps in pump houses. Mm -hmm and uh, we use the sound deadening in the walls. So um, you may hear a little hum uh, as a pump ramps up and a little hum, but um, you're not gonna hear a whole lot. They're, they're, it's not loud by any shape. So when I got our teachers saying, I can't hear in my classroom when those pumps yeah. take on? O only if they're trying to teach inside the pump house. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, will you be asking the school district to share any of the cleanup costs from the environmental contamination from no, the septic? No, no, that We're looking at it just simply a uh, fee simple property uh, transaction uh, for the property and the easement for us to access it. All remediation with the site will be part of our construction costs. How are you going to Let's get back to the access for jobs. Yeah. What, what, tell me again what your plans are for um, access. What we have proposed is um, both a utility easement and an ingress, uh, uh, egress easement. It's in the documents that we provided. Um, Do you have the uh, PowerPoint? This is just a slide yeah, I kind of put together for these, but I don't think just I can show you. Here it is coming right off the top. Yeah, I see the So right side. now so there's a gate that goes right in there. So there, that's right. Right here's the gate. Mm -hmm. And then this is the road, what? Whatever. That's the road that comes into the north. And uh, this is actually, this is a like a parent pickup as well. Oh, okay. So they could get through there mm -hmm. and come through this gate. Yep. Okay. So that's, yeah, good. Because that's it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, we just had to ask you how to do it. You're in school starting and ending hours. We yeah. don't want you over here to pick up during starting and ending hours of school. Correct. And, and these plants um, are highly automated. Um, we have pressure sensors when the, the system goes down, when the pumps kick on and off. Um, we also have what we call a SCADA system. Um, that tell us of various operational issues. So these will not be, these plants will not have, this plant will not have permanently stationed staff. Um, if there is an issue, we get the telemetry of an issue, we will send staff to check on it. Um, but generally on a standard day-to-day -day operation, uh, there may be an employee that stops by, you know, maybe two to three times a week and would be there uh, for an hour or two. Uh, if we have heavier scheduled maintenance, we would certainly you know, coordinate that with the uh, school board so that we are accessing the site uh, in you know, non-traffic times. Yeah, we, yeah if we do not want y'all there. They don't want to be there. And and <laughs> no, yeah. you don't no. want to be there, and we don't want you there. Right, and, and I think that's mutually agreed. Yeah. 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 Like, have you sat in a um, line waiting at a school? Yes, yeah, my, my son's in seventh grade. So, okay, yes. you <laughs> so if you would just make sure. Yes, we we're, we're very aware of that. And we do okay. coordinate and collaborate with the school board uh, very As often. parents would lynch us. Yes. Yeah. Just, just for so familiarity, these are the current tanks that are there now. And as you come in through parent pickup, they're like right here. Yeah. And this is the trailer that we had a sheriff that lives out there too. So, oh, okay. so they come through there. And actually, Right about here is that that booster pump that they that's have right. that's that's enclosed. So, so all of that would go away. Uh, the area that behind the school is right in here, and this is a conservation area yeah. back mm -hmm. and through there. Okay. Hopefully that helps. And this was a pump house at one time, so there was a pump operating there at some point. That's what that is right there. And the uh, anticipated driveway would be at the on the left there at the end of that loop. Yes. And then back toward the, uh, the gate. Just mm -hmm. cut out a section of curb. Now, put your finger so that they all know where the gate is that you showed sure. me, right? There's a gate that's right, right. here, or right now. So see, they wouldn't have far to go from the yeah. parent. We walked in there with their custodian. That guy's great, by the way. So if you ever get a chance to get the times, he does a super job up okay. there. But uh, he took me through here, and we looked at it. Okay. Well, I think that, that gives us a lot more information. And thank you so much for coming. Thank you, too.
Okay, not everybody. They still want to sit through our agenda review workshop. Well, we have board meetings too, so we understand. <laughs> oh, you understand. Okay. All now right. be prepared to present all of that again February 1st for sure. the community yeah, and, for, and for actual questions from us at that time. Okay. The public, yeah, we'll yeah. be asking questions as though we never heard anything. Okay. We've, we've got to let the public know. Understand that. Okay. Um, uh, school board attorney remarks. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. I am going to distribute at the end, as we all walk out, the uh, revised versions of 1.01, 1.02A through L. I'll just distribute uh, them to you again now. I Is gave it to you in November. Yeah, exactly. It's the same thing in November. I just want to make sure everyone has them just for your convenience. All right, okay. I'm, I'm also um, providing to you, although I know it's not the subject of the February 12 workshop, I'm also going to distribute to you uh, a proposed risk management policy again, just so you have it. Um, I'll look forward to, to working with the superintendent and his leadership on the remainder of Section 1, and I think we're meeting on that just this afternoon. Yes, sir. Good. So that's, that's positive. Um, with 7069, now that I know it's going to be on the agenda, I just want to add another word of caution. You know, we're in litigation. It always gives the school board attorney the heebie-jeebies when we talk in a school board open uh, school board meeting about um, open litigation. We're also in confidentiality agreements with the co-plaintiff, 12 other uh, school boards in this matter. I, I just say that uh, because we just need to be very, very mindful that we don't talk about the merits, uh, our, our status and standing in the case, anything like that. Uh, all of that is privileged, and I, I know you know that. I'm just offering that up again. Really what's, what's being presented to the board um, by way of this action is are we going to rescind or are we not? The decision that had been made to join the, the litigation. Okay, That's all. Thank you. Okay, Mr. Davis. Oh no, you're not even on here. You talked all morning. The next is school board member remarks. Sorry, Miss <laughs> uh, Bowler. I just have one quick question. Warehouse situation. Is there any problem with the paper towels in the warehouse? We're in the middle of flu season, and I heard from a couple of custodians that they don't have access to paper towels. And they're playing the old mash game. Yeah, in order to, have, to have access, you got to make sure all they got to do is put in the proper orders, and, and we'll have plenty we have plenty of... my understanding yeah. that they did, and there wasn't. Yeah. So um, if somebody would if check If there's a particular that, school, call me. I would appreciate it. If there's a particular school, call me about it. But <laughs> at this point, I haven't heard anything <coughs> ever about that. Okay. We want them to have yeah. and tools and things. Mm -hmm. But I heard that warehouse was... This flu that's going around, mm -hmm. we've got to be very careful. Okay, Ms. Condon. Has. Just kind of on that note, I've wondered in the past why mm -hmm. we don't do hand sanitizer in the bathrooms of our schools. Is it a cost issue? or Because um, I know that's more effective when it comes to food prevention. Yeah, I can look into it. I would say it's linked to cost. It's not something that school districts actually put in to mm -hmm. the restrooms. Mm -hmm. It's not a supply historically that I've ever seen. In what about district. soap? Oh, yeah. Soap's soap. always. Soap and water. Soap's always. It just seems like it would be more cost effective to have, which I guess is just yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. For the and I know that most, if not all, well, most teachers have hand sanitizer in their classrooms as well. At least I hope they do. Mm -hmm. this one too. Here, here. I have two items. Okay. Um, and it was the two things that I had requested at the end of our January school board meeting. I just want to remind and please bring back the changes you're going to make to the contract process. Um, and also, I had asked, could you bring three to five recommendations for um, where we can get dollars to help with the offset of the insurance costs for this year from police. So if there's any information on that that you can send to the board members, yep. um, I would appreciate it. Yep, I had a long meeting yesterday. We'll, to the chair, we'll send it um, in the next couple of days. Thank you very much. Yes, sir. Okay. Um, I... I want to remind y'all the reception tonight for the Clay County Teacher of the Year and Support Person of the Year starts at 6 o'clock and the event starts at 7. Uh, it's going to be a grand night in Clay County. And um, I, don't, I can't think of anything else that I need to add. I appreciate y'all studying this um, 
the, the old policy and propose new policy, tweak it so that we are prepared to talk at our workshop. With that, I will adjourn the meeting.